Huh? Do you expect the great things from Yah? Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right, daughter, invite our visitors who's, who's looking. Visitors, we invite you to come to this worship experience. You still have time to make it for the word. You still have time to make it. You still have time to make it. All are welcome. I mean. It's now time for the introduction of our speaker for today. And we're going to have the introduction by our apostle, Apostle Ram Rabbi Stansbury. Shabbat Shalom, Yisrael. May we sit in the presence of the Most High. Um, a word for the day is from one of our own. But before I tell, I tell you that, let me tell you this. I've, I've, I've said this year in and year out, but this year I'm saying it extra, extra harder. Save your food up. Things are about to change. I'm telling you, um, 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 America is about to get hit. I'm telling you, it's about to happen. We're about to re reap everything that we have um, sowed. But, but Yah wants his people to be ready when it happens. And there'll be no food on the shelves. That the gas is going up even now. It's just going to go even higher. And, and he wants us as his people to be ready. And don't tell nobody you got food. <laughs> oh my. Just stay, it's, 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 I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's going to come a, a time. That, that's why, if you notice, folks are getting killed every day, shot, all hours of the day, in the street. I'm telling you, things is getting worse. And, and, and the other thing that's going to keep us is being, being in him. I mean, I'm, I got Monique said, Pop, I done heard it again. And she, she, she got this place who, who gives you food that lasts for, for 20 years. Oh, the only thing you do is put water in it. And, and, and it comes, comes food. That's what we got to do because it's going to be, it's going to be crazy. And that's why we, we have to love each other now because we, we're going to have to learn to live together. It's coming. I've been saying that for years, but now it's, it's, it's coming. Right? There are folks who hate us over here. And, and now they're, st 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 they're starting to r rise up now. So it's only his, um, um, his grace that has kept us thus f f far. So I'm thankful that he kept us. So Hallelujah. I mean, all right, now for the word. Let me introduce to you one of our own, Pastor Joseph P. Stansberry, to bring our word for the day. And, and we know he gets revelation, so we're going to ask him to come and feed us. Is that all right? And those of you who, who's, who's out there, just listen to the word. And just enjoy yourself. Take your shoes off. And just enjoy yourself. I mean, glory. All right.
Praise the Lord, everybody. Who's, uh, who's going to read for me? Whomever. Got it. So we trying this light thing. I didn't realize it was this bright up here. <laughs> but it's going to be good. Um, so I got a, a notebook that I keep. And I, I'm trying to um, write down things I hear throughout the week so I remember it. Because, you know, it's always so much going on that when I try to come back to it at 6 or 7 o'clock at night, I'm like, oh, man, what? What do you say? All right. So um, I wrote this down in my notebook, and I, um, I thought it was a good word. It, it spoke to me, you know, when I wrote it down. So I hope it helps you guys. All right. So the title was um, Give Your Present, Gain Your Future. Give Your Present, Gain Your Future. Give Your Present, Gain Your Future. Okay. Go ahead, Maria. Many events that happen to you and around you, and many things that you do to your, that you do yourself, put stress on your body. You can experience stress from your environment, your body, and your thoughts. Day-to-day -day life can often be hectic, as well as draining on both the body and the mind. Going through the day feeling tired and burdened by being tossed about emotionally with the events of and worries is no fun. This all equates to stress that weighs down on your mind and spirit and distracts us from our purpose. Right, so most of us lead this kind of life during the week, right? We let things that pop up sway us either way. We get mad, we get angry, we get sad, we get happy, and we just are an erratic line, right? And it throws us around emotionally. And it causes us to slip into things that isn't necessarily conducive to our purpose, right? It happens all the time. I know it happens to me. People tick me off at work all the time. And it, it could be even from dumbness to, you know, me re being repeating myself or me doing something. And you know I ain't supposed to do it. But just to get the job done, I want to do it anyway. You know, and it could be from work to home to kids, to, to, to everyday things that the enemy throws at us. And sometimes we get so caught up in that that we don't even know the enemy's throwing it at us. Right? And it's this, this purpose is to distract us from our purpose. Right? So what the Lord was telling me when I wrote this down, he was like, you need to give your present to gain your future. Right? Read the next one. We must learn to give him our present, our right now, and trust that he will shine in every moment of our lives. We are always so quick to give our present to whatever situation rolls upon us at any given moment. Right. Not we always want to deal with something right now. If something happens, no, you need to deal with that right now. That's our advice to people. Nope, don't let that wait. Deal with that now. If you don't deal with it now, it'll be... That's our answer to most everything, right? Somebody comes to you, no, you need to deal with that now. It's always, that's always the first reaction, right? We feel slighted if we let it pass, right? We feel like we have Matt then, right? And um, not thinking that most things that Yeshua dealt with, he processed it first and then dealt with it the way it should have been dealt with. Because we always forget when we deal with things right then, it's out of flesh. True. Right? We never let things get past the flesh layer to get to the spirit to get the right answer out. Right? We always deal with it right then, right now, right now, and it's wrong. And the funny thing is, we don't know it's wrong, but people watching us know that it's wrong. Right? We always deal with that thing right now, and we don't give our present to gain our future. We never think about that. Because what you do when the present determines what's coming to you. 
So when you say give your present, you mean give up your, like give it away. Like don't deal with your present right now. Wait to the future. Like. I mean, give your right now moment to him. Because when you let him deal in your right now, it forms what's coming to you in the future. Right? And you can track this throughout, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, but you can track this throughout how you react to things. If you waited a minute and thought about it before you spoke, you wouldn't have got yourself into some troubles that you got in. <laughs> if you had just waited a minute, if you gave him your right now, your future would have been different. Right? And when you think about that, present is kind of like a double duty word here. It's serving two purposes, right? Because if you think enough about him to give him your present, your right now, as a gift, what he gives back to you is greater than what you give him. Right? Give your present, gain your future. So like us as people in general, we're control freaks, right? We don't like that feeling of not being in control of what's going on right now. And I mean, I tell them myself, that's probably why I'm an IT person, right? Because I can get, I, I know for the most part, when I tell a computer to do something, it's going to do it, for the most part. You know what I mean? And I, I don't like when it doesn't do when it, what I tell it to do, right? Because although I get money for doing that, it's still, you know, it's a problem. It's a pain. And dad will tell you, like, I'll be sitting in the room and it won't do something. I'm like, what? You know what I mean? I'm randomly hollering, right? <laughs> But that's how we treat things in life. You know what I mean? Something don't go the way you think it goes, and all of a sudden, what? That comes out, right? So it's not just these things. We, we, um, we, where'd you stop here? Did you read um, the last sentence? We always no. are so quick. Um, not realizing that or taking the time to think of him in it. Go ahead. That was it. Um, we give our present to... Now these are things, a list of things that I came up with. There's probably pages and pages more, mm -hmm. but uh, these are things that we give ourselves to. Um, it might not even be one, uh, just one at one time. It could be multiple things at one time, but you, this is a list that I compiled and this is what we give ourselves to. Go ahead, go ahead. Insults. Right. Indulgence. Mm -hmm. Careers. Mm -hmm. Children. Romance. Hobbies, illnesses, laziness, money. Now, hold on. Now, those are just little things, right? You know, uh, I don't got no money this week. What I'm going to do? Leave me alone. I ain't got no money this week. We give ourselves over to that, right? And that then becomes bigger than the Yah we serve, right? When you, when you give your present to a thing rather than him, you're now worshiping that thing, right? So think about this. Somebody insults you. What'd you say to me? Right, that's the present, right? An indulgence. Um, I ain't talking about you, but I'm using you as an example. Um, somebody loves sweets, right? Snacks, and get mad if they don't have them. Right? It's just like Pepsis or sodas or coffee, right? You can't function without the coffee. You're twitching like you'll crack it, right? Sorry. Sorry, camera. <laughs> but that's something that becomes bigger than the one you serve. It becomes the one you serve, right? Children, I can't do it. I can't, I can't come to morning service right now because the kids are just acting funny and they're just acting weird and, you know, I can't do it. Hobbies, illnesses. Oh, my head hurts. I got a headache. I ain't going to make it to service today. Really? Um, just on that subject alone, the, the example that Dad gave when he was sick and recovering. You can do anything you want, especially when it pertains to serving y'all. That's the example he set for us. You know, when he was, what, 170 pounds coming in here? We wheel him in. He's still dancing. 
illness is no excuse. Unless you're contagious, then stay you behind home. You know what I mean? <laughs> we'll catch you next time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Laziness, I just don't feel like it today. It's so nice outside. I don't feel like coming today. Or, you know, I was there for the morning service and, you know, it's so nice out. And, you know, I got this wedding to go to. Um, I ain't going to make the second service today. Right? And think about, think about if he did that to us. You know, I came there for the first need he had, and, you know, it's kind of nice out. I got these birds to take care of. So, you know what, he'd be good for the next one. Right? Imagine how that feel in reverse. Right? And then, in that situation, you picking something over Yahweh. And I've, I've been in that situation with a parent, right? Like, the parent picks something over me, and then I'm wondering, like, what's wrong with me? Right? I mean, we all had that kind of experience before. And we know how that feels. Right? Um, start at where we left off, the, the past. Money. The past. Right? So that's a big one, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of us live in the past. You know, we still hurting off stuff that's been 15 years ago. We still mad about it sitting in the back avoiding them, we see them on the street, we take another road, like, you know what I mean? Stuff like that, the past. We, pay, we take our present and focus it on the past and miss our future, right? And then, like we said, we get to the point where your past becomes your Yahweh. Your past becomes your master, right? And then you pattern yourself, you pattern things you do on what happened to you in the past and it stunts you from moving forward, right? And that's a big one. And that's something that I don't think uh, the body takes time to deal with, right? We come and we get saved, but we never shed the past. We never forget about the past. Yahweh threw things in the sea of forgetfulness, right? But we can't, we don't even know where that is. Forgetfulness, I, that ain't, I don't know nothing about that, you know what I mean? And it's, it's a problem, but it's something that the enemy uses to keep us from our purpose, right? What's the next one? Regrets and resentment. Right? Man, that's still living in the past, right? What's next? Unforgiveness. Still living in the past, but it's, no, it, it's worth noting separately, right? something happened and we can't forgive the person sitting next to us or we can't forgive somebody that we come in contact with a lot and we try to avoid them right and all that does is hurt you doesn't uh hurt the person you hold forgiveness for you want to change my batteries It doesn't hurt the person that you feel like hurt you. They live in their lives. They're getting new jobs, getting raises. Ain't nothing wrong with them at all. <laughs> the person that's hurting is you, all right? And that, again, becomes the thing you're dealing with in the present, stunting your future, all right? Keep going. I'm paranoia. Right, everybody talking about me. You got a paranoia demon, right? You come in, people talk, and then they stop talking because they've seen you come in, all of a sudden they talk about me. Right? It's deep, right? But that's something that you then are concerned about all the time, right? Then it becomes something that you serve. All right, what's next? Immaturity. That's, yeah. I don't have to explain that one, right? <laughs> but I mean immaturity will get you killed right nowadays when you you know 20, 30, 40, 50 still being petty it's a problem right go ahead and many more right so like I said that's just some I listed we could probably just have a couple more minutes just listing stuff 
and be looking around, right? <laughs> but these are things, these are just an example of things that we give our present to. We battle it all the time, not knowing that it's taken us from the thing that God has purposed for us, right? And it's something that we don't even consider that the, the, the task of the enemy, the enemy's purpose, is to keep us from doing things that Yah asks us to do. So, like, I mean, if you hold an unforgiveness for somebody and he tells you give them a word, that's holding you back, right? If you still can't forgive them, you're probably not going to give them that word. If you hear him say, get them $30, buy them dinner, right? you like, I don't know about all that. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's a problem, right? And the same thing, if you're living in the past and Yah gives you something for someone from your past, right? Or if you're running from your past, right? And your past comes to visit you. And you ain't over that thing, it's a problem. And that's, that's where we as saints choose to live. And it's time, we're coming up on a time that's fast approaching that we need to stop living in the past and stop living in things that just come through us in, in the present and live in Yahweh so he can mold our future. So again, it's give your present, gain your future. Right. Read the next one for me. Okay. We let these things distract us, not being mindful that this is most likely the latest attempt to carry out the enemy's plan. Right. John 10 and 10. Oh, I may have forgotten that one in the, uh, yeah. The thief comes only in order to steal kill and destroy i have come so that they may have life life in its fullest measure so the key thing to remember in everything that you deal with in the present apply it to the scripture and you know who it's coming from right that comment was it meant to kill steal or destroy if it fits in that category you know where it came from now, our job is not to make the same comments. My comment to them is it meant to kill, steal, or destroy. Right? Think about that thing. Because if it's coming from the flesh, it's meant to cut. It's meant to last. Right? It's meant to tell them something. Right? So we know if what we say fits within, read the scripture again. Um, oh, to have life. Oh. If, if we know yeah, what we steal, say, kill and destroy. right? The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. If what we say fits in those three words, who are we working for? Right? You thieved it. I mean, and there's... <laughs> but I, I'm laughing at that, but it ends up happening that way. You make that comment... And you get locked up in some form or another. Because you gave your present to kill, steal, or destroy. And it molded your future. You got locked up in some form or fashion. Either your funds dried up, your relationship dried up, your friendships dried up. Yep. Random car breakdowns. Stuff falling apart all of a sudden. I remember... Um, back when I was on a little shaky bit with my tithes, right? And I, I was like, all right, so um, I need to either pay the rent or bring these tithes. And I was like, let me go ahead and pay this rent, right? All of a sudden, my shirt started falling apart, right? Buttons flying off. Like, randomly, I'm just walking, right? My button falls off. I'm like, what the? <laughs> right? <laughs> so I gave my present to a wary, right? And I shape my future. Right? And that's things that we don't think about. Like, we, when we decide to do that thing, we never think about the future of, of that thing. Right? Um, 
I left my notebook back there, guys. Anybody in the, in the sound booth, look in my backpack for a black notebook. Yep. There's a bit that I didn't write on this paper that I need to share. Thank you. So while I'm, uh, while I'm bringing this up, can we flip to the next scripture? For me, please. That's Isaiah 43, yeah. 18 and 19. Stop dwelling on past events and brooding over times gone by. I am doing something new. It's springing up. Can't you see it? I am making a road in the desert, rivers in the wasteland. So... That's exactly what I want to highlight. So I'm doing something new. Can't you see it? Right? We can't see that because we're stuck in right now. Right? We're such uh, stagnant people right now. Right? We, we lost our future insight only because we want to deal with whatever happened to us right now. Right? And we miss the foresight of the gifts that we have in us. Right? Because we're dealing with it right now. And we keep forgetting we're, we're, we're more temporal than that. We can see stuff happening, right? But only if you don't react out of your flesh. That's the only time we can tap into that gift that we have, right? But like I said, the things from the previous scripture that we choose to operate in, either kill, steal, or destroy, that takes precedence, and that wipes out our ability to do this. Can't you see it? Right? So... Next scripture for me, Hebrews 13 and 5. Keep your lives free from love of money and be satisfied with what you have. For God himself has said, I will never fail you or abandon you. So this is one of the things we struggle with is the, it borderlines, right? We, if, you, if you tell somebody you got a love for money, nah, right? You recoil on that. But when you to the point where you counting how much bills you got and how much I can get more of, and when it comes to the point where you are choosing to go work or to go make more money over serving y'all, that becomes the love of money, right? We rationalize our way out of it but it is what the actions show that it is, right? And that's a thing that distracts us from getting where we need to be given our present gain and our future, right? I mean, because if you think about that, if you miss times that you suppose to commune with Yahweh, you miss recharging yourself, right? So you get out there and stuff happens to you and you haven't even put into yourself how to react to that situation, right? You get tired, you get tired, you get tired enough where you flow easier to flipping out than you do to ministering to a situation, right? That's just the effect that it has. That's just what it does, right? If, you, if you're not plugged into the power source long enough, the battery dies. Right? That's just what it is. Um, the note I had here is um, it's a computer reference, and I'm going to bring you up to speed on it. But um, sometimes, in a, uh, from my profession, if you have a large group of computers and you make a setting, you, you change something, it takes a while for that setting to go all the way out to the last computer. It's called propagation. Now, the way he was given to me, to me spiritually is um, we always forget that when we say yes, right? It's not yes, and then all of a sudden it's a yes for all the days, right? Right, you say yes, and then you had to keep saying yes those next days that come, you know? And we forget that we said yes five years ago, right? And then when that hard situation comes, all of a sudden we forgot we said yes. Right? 
So the problem that we have in IT is if we make a change in Germany, right, it can take, depending on how slow the network is, it can take three to four hours for it to get to America, right? So this person tries to do something and they don't have access to it. And then they call back up and get mad and say, look, you said you did it. Where is it? He was like, you got to wait for a minute because it's still coming over. It's still propagating, right? So us, we try to approach things in the flesh, saying that we already did it. It's already done. It's already done. It's already done. But when we do it that way, our flesh is still propagating, right? Our flesh is still accepting that yes. So when we go and attack things in the flesh and it doesn't do right, and then we start making comments to kill, steal, and destroy, it's because we're approaching it in the wrong way. We already know that the yes has happened. And we got to make our flesh do the yes, right? So if we think about it like that, you can't approach things from the flesh because the flesh doesn't know about the yes, right? You have to approach things from the spirit because the spirit already knows the yes, right? And when you look at it that way, everything that comes to you is not a problem. Everything that comes to you doesn't need a kill, steal, or destroy response, right? And we lose focus of that all the time, right? Especially when that thing comes up to you, right? With the right tone. That little bit of irk tone, right? And you're like, um, you need to remember who you're talking to, right? You need to, and like, this is just falling out of me now. Like, looking at people over my glasses. It's a problem, right? <laughs> that stands very stare, right? <laughs> but, um, we need to make sure that we check the flesh because the flesh always wants to kill, steal, destroy, cut, break down, make people understand, stuff like that. And when we approach people in that manner, all we're doing is being used by the enemy, right? We're making the enemy's job easier, right? So uh, what scripture are we on? Romans? Yes. Romans 12 These are um, ways that Yeshua is telling us how to give our present to gain our future. So as we read these, this is what I want to focus us on, right? So Romans 12 and, two. 12 and 2. In other words, do not let yourselves be conformed to the standards of the Olam Hazeh. Instead, keep letting yourselves be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you will know what God wants and will agree that what he wants is good, satisfying, and able to succeed. So that scripture right there, it uh, paraphrases what the topic is. Give your present, gain your future, right? Don't be conformed to what's going on around you right now, but be transformed by what Yah purpose is for you, what his purpose is for you, and then you'll know what's going to happen to you in the future. Right? Psalms 118 and 24. This is the day Adonai has made, a day for us to rejoice and be glad. Right? So that goes against all those times we say, oh, it's this kind of day. Already. It's going to be one of them days. One of what days? This is the, the day the Lord has made. Right? Everything the Lord makes is good. Right? So that's another way to think about the days before we get in that mood. Because that, when we say that, it drags us into a mood. Right? Uh, let's read Ephesians 5, 15 through 16. Therefore... Pray careful, I'm sorry. Therefore, pay careful attention to how you conduct your life. Wait, read that again. Therefore, pay careful attention to how you conduct your life. We 
act like nobody else watches us, right? You do things and say things and randomly approach things. And we forget that other people look at us as an example, right? They know your prophet. They know, even if they don't know your prophet, they know you in church. They know you attend. They know you know the. But um, it don't reflect. And we lose that first part of that right there. We never think about, pay careful attention to what we do or how we conduct our lives, right? And it affects our future, right? I mean, an example from my life is uh, the current job that I have. Um, I had met the boss because I helped him in help desk, right? And I just did what I did, right? I fixed his problem in, I don't know, like five or 10 minutes. After I was done, he said, yo, um, I'm paraphrasing, right? He didn't say yo, because you know what I mean. You know why. Um, he said, you know, I have been going through other help desk people for the last eight hours, right? And you fix this thing in five minutes. He was like, I appreciate, you know, you fixing it and you got good customer service skills. And then, you know, it shaped my future because he offered me a job. Right? So just knowing how you conduct yourself. And, you know, he was a little snippy at first because, you know, I'd be snippy too. I'd be mad if somebody, it was eight hours, right? And this should be done in five minutes. So, um, I could have been, you know, hey, look, you need to calm down. You know what I mean? Or I could have handled it like I handled it. But either way, either reaction, either reaction shapes your future, right? You give your present and gain your future. So it's very, very important for that first part. I know we got more of it. Go ahead. <laughs> it says live wisely, not unwisely. Use your time well. For these are evil days. So that's another part we. I know it's just Mike. That's another part that we um, forget about, especially live wisely, right? That's a foreign word to most of us. Right? We don't know what wise is, right? <laughs> but again, it's it's just because we choose to give our present to something mediocre. Right? When we choose to do that thing through the flesh, it's subpar, right? It's below what we're capable of. And we let things drag us down to dealing with it right now. Right? Is that all of it? Okay. Um, uh, Colossians 3 and 2. Focus your minds on the things above, not on things here on earth. And that's a direct answer to the question, how do we give our present, right, to gain our future? How do we do that? Well, here we go. Focus your minds on the things above, right? And here's a good example uh, from me, right? I ain't telling nobody else. But um, if I'm in the middle of doing something, I'm focused on something, and somebody else tries to come to me and ask a question, I'm not really paying attention, right? They could, most of the time, like, I didn't really hear you, right? Because I'm focused on something. I'm trying to get this done, right? So I'll be like, yeah, 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 uh-huh. You know, so, okay, I'll deal with it in a minute. I got, I'm working. So if we take that mindset and focus our, our attentions on the things above, when dumb stuff comes around us, to try to trip us up, we're gonna have the same reaction. Oh, wait, wait, I'm busy right now, I'm trying to do something. You know, and it won't have that same reaction where you gotta be like, what, what'd you just say? You know what I mean? And that's how we do it. We gotta make sure we focus on the right things. Okay? Colossians uh, 4, five through six. Behave wisely towards outsiders. Hey. <laughs> Say that again. 
<laughs> behave wisely toward outsiders, making full use of every opportunity. Let your conversation always be gracious hey. and interesting. What? <laughs> Let it be what? Gracious? Gracious. Right? Mm -hmm. You mean like happy and, <laughs> you know, not cutting at all? No sarcasm or anything? Let it be what? Gracious and interesting. Uh -huh. So that you will know how to respond in any particular, to any particular individual. Right. So, I mean, a lot of times we don't know how to respond to people because we're not even listening until we hear something that, that hits, us, hits our flesh in the wrong way. Right. Then all of a sudden, there's no part of that gracious and behave wisely. There's none of that. Right. Because they didn't tick you off. Right. So this is a good key on how to react to people. Most of the time, if you listen to them, most of the time, you got some ignorant people. But most of the time, if you listen to them, they don't mean no harm, right? You can get them back. You can get them back normally, normally, right? You can get them back in line wisely and graciously, right? Most of the time. At least I can with help desk. And there's a way I can cut them off graciously and wisely, right? But it ain't no need for what you just say. I'm gonna punch you in your face, right? I heard I heard that a lot as I was, you know. <laughs> but um, most of the time. Now, there, now, don't get me wrong. There's times where you need to be stern and you need to be. But you can do that and not sin, right? Be angry and sin not. So I mean. There's a small time where you need to let them know, right? But there's ways you can let them know without coming off the hinges, right? <laughs> I mean, is it, even, is it even the right thing to let them know? Because even though we might say it wisely, we're still trying to find a way to say it sharply. So should we just leave it alone and just not? I still think there's a way you can say it. And not on the first round, like somebody says something crazy and you're like, oh, what you did? Like, I, I think you can address something in Yah's timing and not be sharp with it. Correct me if I'm, if I'm not thinking correctly, but I, I still think there's a way that you can um, correct, and correct sounds too sharp, but you know what I'm trying to say. I think there's a way you can let somebody know that you were offended or they're being offensive without being offensive, right? And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, let you... Why are we offended? That's a very good point, though. Because if you see off if something offends you, it's usually keying off of something that's already in you. Well, I have a, an example. I was at work one day and I was talking to a patient over the counter and one of the treatment coordinators came out and started talking so loud over me to somebody else that she was helping. Mm -hmm. And I stopped talking because I couldn't hear myself speak. Mm -hmm. And the, the patients I was speaking to stopped and kind of looked like, really? So I said, well, come over here. So we moved over, let her finish talking, and then I said what I had to say. Mm -hmm. And I was irritated because, one, it was rude. I thought it was disrespectful, not only to me, but to the people that I was speaking to. So when she came out and I said, you know what? I can't go all day without saying anything because it's gonna irritate me. And maybe, just maybe, she doesn't even know that she was wrong. Mm -hmm. So I waited a minute, I said, you know what, Lord, give me the words to say, because I feel irritated and I don't want it to come off nasty. I waited about 15, 20 minutes and I went into her room and I said, hey, I just want you to be aware of how I felt. I said, um, I feel some type of way about it, but I want you to know, and I didn't want to not say anything to you all day and it fester. Mm -hmm. So when you came up to the front, you spoke so loudly, I couldn't even hear myself speak to my patient. And I said, and 
my patients felt slighted. They looked like, really? So I want you to know that it, it, it came off really wrong. She said, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I didn't mean to come off that way. I had no idea. I, so she was clueless. She didn't know. But the fact that I made her aware of it, the fact that I made her aware of it made her realize that, okay, wow, I, I did something wrong. But I think if we never correct or let people know that they did something that was out of line, they don't know how to correct it. They don't know how to fix it. Right. So if somebody's like the type of person who speaks really loudly when they shouldn't, like if they're on the phone call, I think people, I think people need to, right, if they can't hear you, you mean they're oh, speaking oh, oh. loudly? <laughs> yeah, maybe people just don't know. Yeah. So I brought it to her attention and it didn't happen again, but I think some people need to know when, when they're falling short or when they're doing something that's out of the lines of right. Like mm -hmm. I, I, without being disrespectful, I wasn't disrespectful, but she needed to know that how she came across to not just me, but to other people around me. Yeah, and I think, like, like I was saying, I think most of the time people don't know that they're being offensive to you, right? And sometimes you can let that slide and they, maybe they had a bad day, maybe something's going on. But the point I'm trying to make is most of the time we want to attack instead of minister to, right? And that's what we need to make sure that we don't approach in that manner, because most of the time when it irks us, we like, look, let me get them straight. Yeah. So that, so the fact that you you was there, you you would feel that you feel kind of way was was was, was meant that was wrong in you. He, even though you you you, you wouldn't get a toe, but at the, at, the, at the same time, it it was in you. But I was just saying, there, there's some people. Who can't hear well. So when they can't hear well, they speak louder. Oh, you know, not only that, but they have wax in their ear. It's, it's blocking. They still can't hear. Because I, I do it sometimes. Joy says, Dad. I'm like, What? I'm like, it's kind of loud. You know, so sometimes we can't hear. So we. We speak loud. Yeah, I had a I had a cleaning lady at a previous job. She was old, like high sixties, from the hood, right? And she she seriously she couldn't really hear that well, right? So she would we'd be on the phone and she'd come in, hey, how y'all doing? You know, blowing your ear up, and I'm like, I'm on the phone, <laughs> you know what I mean? But and she didn't mean no harm, but at the same time, you wouldn't know. If you saw her around, because she didn't really talk to people. She only really talked to people she was around a lot. So, like, you wouldn't know if you kind of passed her that she couldn't hear, right? You'd think she was just, just ignorant cleaning lady, right? <laughs> so, yeah, there's that, there's that example. Um, the other one I wanted to share is, you know, if people are despitefully, you know, being some kind of way towards you, you don't need to respond to that. It's just pray for those that despitefully use you. And I got a, I got a scripture in here for that somewhere. It's in here somewhere. Um, but, I mean, I've been in situations where people have, you know, said things that I didn't do things or I was responsible for things that I wasn't. And in a work environment, right? And my boss came to me and was like, look, I want you to know, I know this ain't true, but I want you to know this is happening. Um, I want you to be a little extra cautious and documenting everything. It's like, I know... I know what you do, and I know, that you, I know what you don't do, but I want you to write this down so there's um, you know, some extra protection for you, right? And before she said that, I didn't know, right? I'm just doing what I do. So if you approach things correctly, right, your future is going to be molded for you, right? My boss came to me and said that this was happening. I didn't know, but they wanted me to be cautious in the way I dealt with that person right so you don't have to approach all the time sometimes that insight or even people around you will give you that insight to deal with something the correct way right and that just proves that we don't have to go on the attack all the time um can we read luke six 32 through 42. 
What credit is it to you if you love only those who love you? Why even sinners love those who love them? Right. See, and us as saints, we always want the easy way, right? We want the easy stuff. Like we good at level one, right? We can do level one all day, right? But there's no growth at level one, right? The challenges come as you progress through stages, right? So like it says here, we, what credit is it to us? How is that a credit to our character? How is that a credit to the one we serve if we love only the ones who love us, right? And that ain't even part of the, what he tells us to do, right? It's good to love somebody who's good and, you know, we cool. Hey, hey, brother. Hey, girl. How you doing? You know what I mean? It's good to see you, blah, 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 right? That's nothing. That's easy. The challenge is, keep going. Um, what credit is it to you if you do good only to those who do good to you? Even sinners do that. What credit is it to you if you lend only to those who you expect will pay you back? Even sinners lend to each other, expecting to be repaid in full. Mm -hmm. Keep going. But love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing back. Right. I got you got to read that one again. <laughs> Love your enemies, do good and lend expecting nothing back. And that ain't just money, right? It's time, that's advice. Wow. It's counseling. Right? Cuz we we always are you know tit for tat. I do for you, you do for me. I give you this, I expect something back. Right? And when the reality is, if you think about it, it's never that way, right? Maybe one or two occasions, but it's never that way, right? Say again. You get it back from another source, usually. Not the same source you, that you are giving to, but it comes back from another, another source. Right. I mean, that's why we have multiple streams, right? We're always one way. Like, I give this way, I expect it back this way, right? When it's never... It never comes back like that. And we get, we get mad, we get hot. If it don't come back the same way we gave it. Keep reading. Your reward will be great and you will be children of Ha Elyon for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Show compassion just as your father shows compassion. That's a tough one for us to do um, I'm using me as an example so like um, I get irritated when people at the same level as me both professionally and personally um, have a hard time getting something that's elementary right or at least that I think is elementary right because it might not be the same thought on the other side right so I mean especially professionally professionally is it's a real arc for me because I you we get paid for this, right? You're supposed to be a professional. And I got to explain to you the basics of how this works. You know, let me talk to somebody else. Like, I, I have a problem showing compassion with that. I mean, if, if you tell me that from the gate, I don't know how this works. I don't know what to do. You might have to help me out a little bit. I'm all right with that. You know, I know what to expect right away. But if you come off like you know it all, and then, you know, it turns out you don't know nothing, I got a problem with that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. But that's the compassion thing, right? So that's how we treat, you know, lending and, you know, partnerships and friendships. That's how we treat it. You know, if you're on the same level as me, what's wrong with you? Right? And we never think that maybe we're in this person's sphere of influence to bring them where they need to be. Right? We never think like that, right? It's always what they gonna do for me. If I do it for you, you should do it for me. That's why we always are. And that's, you know, that's not compassion, right? That's a little bit of selfishness, really. It's the opposite. Keep going. Don't judge and you won't be judged. Ah. We're quick to judge too, right? But then get mad when people judge you. Who they think they are? They think they're the same person as you are. Right? Keep going. 
don't condemn and you won't be condemned. Mm. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Mm -hmm. So again, these are all examples of things we let uh, occupy our present. Right? That's a great explanation of it. But if we give our present focus on those things above, it shapes our future. Right? Where are we at? Give and you will receive gifts. The full measure. Compact it, shaken together, and overflowing. Will be put right in your lap. Right? Mm -mm -mm. So we hear this all the time from money. Like, it's, it's scripture. It's, it's offering time. Pull it out. Come on. Go to Luke. You know, that's how we hear it all the time. You give money and it'll come back to you extra, right? I mean, yeah, it works for money, but it works for everything else too. With everything you give, it's a sowing and reaping, right? Everything you give is coming back. Press down, shaking together, running over, compact. Everything you give, right? So if you give uh, killing, stealing, and destroying, that's coming back to you, press down in a beat up box, right? Extra. So it's a it's a sowing and reaping law, right? It's it's more than just money, and that's it's a shame that we don't hear it like that. Wow. But now that you now that we realize that, you can see how that comes back, right? We never see the other side of things. Keep on. For the measure with which you measure out will be used to measure back to you. He also told them a parable: Can one blind man lead another blind man? Won't they both fall into a pit? Right. So what we were just talking about, about friendships and relationships, right? If both of y'all at the same level, who's leading? Who's following? Right? Keep on. A Talmud is not above his rabbi. The Talmud is the, uh, the taught one, right? The disciple. But each one, when he is fully trained, will be like his rabbi. Hmm, that's good. So why do you see the splinter in your brother's eye, but not notice the log in your own eye? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove the splinter from your eye when you yourself don't see the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, then you will see clearly so that you can remove the splinter from your brother's eye. And when we act out things from the flesh and our present, that's exactly what we're doing. We're picking things out, small things out of the people's eyes around us when we smacking people with the log that's sticking out of our eye. Right? That's exactly the way we act. And when he gave this to me, he was like, look, you need to stop dealing in the present. Let me deal with your present. So you can shape your future. Right? I got a couple more and I'm closing. For real though. Right? <laughs> uh, first Corinthians. Actually, wait a minute. I want to do this first. So, we really, 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 really need to be careful on the things that we give ourselves over to. Right? I'm going to read these scriptures and I'm going to explain. Uh, can we do Psalm uh, 37 and 4? Psalm 37 and 4. Okay. Then you will delight yourself in Adonai, and he will give you your heart's desire. So the rule of thumb is you're always going to give us the desires of our heart. Right? It's the rule of thumb. Okay, but look at the other side of this, Romans 1 and 24. This is why God has given them up to the vileness of their heart's lust, to the shameful measure of each other's bodies. Oh, shameful misuse of each other's body. So when we take our present and focus it on those things that we listed earlier 
it becomes the desire of our heart because we're serving that thing, right? So Yahweh gives us the desires of our heart, right? If we keep focusing on the things, they become the desires of our heart. And if they're against him, what does he do? He gives us over to it. Fine. You want to do that? Go ahead and do it. Right? So this is why we got to be extremely careful on what we focus on, right? Because the focus becomes a desire, and the desire becomes our future. Right? Everybody follow that? So if the desires of our heart he gives, we need to make sure that the desires of our heart line up with what he has sanctioned. Right? Because everything we desire will become our future. Everything we desire will become our future. Now, whether he likes it or not, that's the, that's the thing we need to weigh. But that's why we need to be extremely careful on what we focus on. We can't let the everyday little whims and whams and immature petty stuff be the things we focus on. Because we're going to get more and more of that thing that we focus on. Right? Um, can we read uh, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 through 8? Here's the point. He who plants sparingly also harvests this sparingly. Each should give according to what he has decided in his heart, not grudgingly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God has the power to provide you with very gracious gift, a very gracious gift in abundance, so that always in every way you will have all you need yourselves and be able to provide abundantly for every good cause. So the important things here, one, is um, we know the scripture, God appreciates a cheerful giver, we take, we take up money, so come up and praise the Lord when you give me your money, right? That's, that's what we think. But we also got to think about it in our context here. If we give our present, you gain our future. So if you ever, um, for those with kids, you ever um, ask your kid to do something, right, and you know they don't want to do it, so they come up and do it like this. All right, it's done. You know? And then you ready to whoop the behind, right? <laughs> you ready to whop it. Right? You ready to go wild on them. <laughs> but how many times do we do that to Yahweh, right? He says, do this. And you like, ah. <sighs> All right, God, I did it. Right? That's not cheerful giving. Right? <laughs> That's not cheerful giving at all. Right? And the, the way we give things is the way we get it back. Right? So if you think about it like that, that's why you have to act in compassion to everyone. Right? Because I can do a nice thing, but be mean about it. And it changes the whole way, or it, it changes the whole light on it, right? I can give an example. I won't give a name. You know what I'm talking about, though. Um, back in college, um, it was time for me to pay for books, right? And I had somebody who said that they would, they would pay for my books, right? My books was like $800, right? And I was like, oh, yay, you know, all right, that's cool. They gave me the money. About a week later, I get a call. So, um, you working or anything? You, you working? I'm like, yeah. So, wh wh what's wrong with all your money? Where's all your money going? Why can't you pay for books? I'm sorry? Yeah, I, I mean, you, you got a full time job and everything. Why can't you pay for your own books? Oh, really? Okay, well, here go to $700 back. $800, there you go. You don't have to worry about me asking for nothing else. Right? So, I mean, I reacted wrong. I already admit that. It was a while ago. I'm good with it now. 
But in that action, the blessing turned into something else, right? Because you could have been, you could have left the way it was, and I'd have been happy that the Lord met my need, right? But when you put that spin on it, it then becomes what? It becomes um, an Ishmael, right? Because that blessing brought sorrow with it, right? So you could be, you could be hearing God and do something and taint it, and it becomes the opposite of what it was supposed to be, right? So this is why we need to act in compassion in all things, right? Because you can, you can take and pervert a blessing and totally mess up what Yahweh's trying to do through you, right? So I got off on a tangent there. So question. Go ahead. So there's times when the Lord does tell you to give somebody, say, give this person such and such. You may not want to do it, but you know God's telling you to do it. Mm -hmm. So if you do it and your mindset isn't there, like your heart's not in to give them this money, mm -hmm. um, how, does that, how does that affect you? Even though you know God told you to do it, you really don't want to do it, but you're being obedient, but your heart's not in it. You, you don't, you're not being a cheerful giver when you give this, how does that affect you when you still were obedient to do what Yahweh told you to do? There is something to say about obedience without lip. Because um, I'm going to give the example here. Like I've done stuff that dad wanted me to do and I wasn't cool with it, but I did it and he didn't know I wasn't cool with it. In the flesh. He probably read all up in my book and everything with all of that anointment over there. He probably read it and saw that I really didn't want to do it. But you never heard me say, I don't want to do this. Right? So, examples. Um, we've had people bless visitors or people who come with financial money. And they have said, you know, I wasn't really cool with this, but I did it. Not openly to the person that they were giving to, but, you know, later on they said, you know, the Lord told me to give $100 and I was really trying to hold on to this $100. This was my last $100. They come back and say, look, the Lord blessed me. Y'all had no idea that I needed $100 to pay this bill, right? It blessed them that, to know that you was following the Lord, right? They don't need to know the struggles that you have and going on inside of you, right? When you start vocalizing it while you're trying to do something, that perverts what it's supposed to be made as. And part of that is, you know, that's the struggle between flesh and spirit, right? That's how you grow in your faith, right? But just don't verbally blast out that you ain't feeling this at all. Because that's, I mean, that sees a discord, that's um, um, perverting the, uh, uh, what you're supposed to be doing for y'all. That's a whole number of things, right? But I think it's a certain maturity to do something that you don't fully understand and then watch and see what Yah does it for you. Because you, you're not sowing you're not into the person, you are being Yah and sowing into the person. Right? So sometimes you got to think about I'm not fully in the place where I can see why I'm doing this. So let me just go ahead and do it and expect Yah to refill this need. Right. So like again, I say I say all that to say it's 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 something to be said about obedience without uh, mouth recoil. And that comes with that. maturity. Yes. Um, so I, for, I forgot my point here, but um, it's extremely important that we keep the focus on the things of Yah. And that'll help us deal with our present because we're consulting the eye on everything, right? We're keeping that connection open with him. And he's going to help us deal with whatever comes our way as long as we consult him in it. And given our present, will shape our future. Give your present, give your future. All right? So that's all I have. I hope this message helped you. I hope this message helps you on the internet. Any questions at all? Any comments? No question, but this word was totally, totally for me. I felt like you were talking exactly to me because this week, the Lord's really showing me how to put things into perspective mm. and not to, let me get it. <laughs>
try to get it out without like bawling. Um, how to put things in perspective because everybody has their own set of circumstances or what have you. But when you come to the situation and take the situation for not how you feel about the situation, mm -hmm. but what he may be trying to do for you in the situation and look at the bigger picture, it makes what you're going through so much easier to deal with. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thank him because like all these scriptures were just awesome. Like I need to go over them and go over them again. But we look at things a lot of times for what it, what it looks like or what it feels like. And it's always about a feeling or we put our emotions in situations and it's not about the emotions. It's about what we know God can do and how he's a healer and how he can bring us out of stuff. But it's based on trusting him and knowing who he is and know that he's going to fix it and do it if we believe that he can do it and not get stuck on what our situation feels like to us or what it looks like because it's not even about what it feels like. I believe that everything that we go through teaches us how to trust him even the more. Mm -hmm. If you're looking at, oh, I should have $500, but you have $400, how about you believe that the other hundred's gonna come some way and not focus on, I don't have enough, I don't have enough. And a big thing is our finances a lot of times. People look at what we, you can't do because you don't have this, but how about look at that you have some kind of money coming in and that you can do something with this. And it's just a, it's just a perspective. And all this week, like people at work been going off and been snapping and they come to me and I see the whole situation and it's like I have to kind of direct them if this is how you got to do it. And then he hits me and says, Lexi, you can give everybody else the advice, but how about you take some advice too? And it's mm. like, you know what? So it's, it's all about how you see something because somebody else sees it this way, but you see the same situation, but you see it differently. So it's, I got to learn how to give my present to him and not react, but respond it was just the whole, it was just, it was blessed. Thank you. The word was awesome, awesome, awesome. And I thank you for it. It was blessed. I mean. Um. Turn the mic on. I thought that the scriptures were, they were, you know what, hold up. <laughs> <laughs> I had to give you a pound on that one. They were just awesome, and they were, they were fit. They were for right now, you know, and I too felt like you were speaking to me. And um, so that's how you know. It's definitely the word was on point. I mean. It's on point. It, 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 it fed. It fed me today, definitely. So I want to thank you for, for this word and for being obedient and definitely pouring it out. But... Um, it was stepping on my toes because I had an issue yesterday uh -oh. <laughs> with, with one of my family members. And I'm telling you, that's cutting like a knife thing. I, <laughs> and, and then we're all so strong-willed. Mm. You know, we're not going to let it in. And then I started seeing it for what it was. And then I began turning my situation into, you know what, I forgive you. I know you're speaking out of guilt and anger. You know, I just started turning the whole thing around and I was, I was totally, I, I pulled myself out of it because mm. I saw, I saw myself in it. Mm. So I pulled myself out of it gradually and at the end of it, I, I was, I was looking holy again and I was thankful for that because, you know, that's growth for me because right. now, you know, it, it's just a good thing. It's a good thing. So I just want to thank you for sharing the, the, the scriptures were on point and it felt like everything you said was for me. I mean. So I just, that's, that, that's awesome. That's awesome. I mean. I'm going to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, a comment for both. Um, it, it was a while ago when uh, y'all gave me how uh, his relationship with, with Adam and Eve were, that um, they didn't have physical sight on earth until they actually sinned. So everything that they saw in the earth was through his eyes, right? And when you think about it like that, that's the way he's trying to get us back to. He's trying to make us see everything through his eyes instead of our own, right? Because when we're in situations and we're at ground level with it, we can't see the way he can from an aerial view, right? We can't see what's coming around or what needs to be changed or what needs to be moved unless we get that intel from him. Right? So he's trying to get us back to operate in that way. 
right? And when we look at a thing through our eyes, we want to cut through it to get to the next thing, right? When we look at a thing through his eyes, it's always heal and move on, right? And that's, that's where he's trying to get us back to. And, that, you know, and in every situation we're in, if we look at it from that way, like I said, it changes your future. Go ahead. You can, you got the mic, that's fine. This, the scriptures really touched me too, as far as the situation. I had a situation where I made something for my husband and I was so proud. I took my time and did it. I was so happy <laughs> and I presented it to him. Oh. Then about a few hours later, he gave it away. Not all of it, but most of it. Oh. And it hurt me, but it shouldn't have. Mm -hmm. Because we're, we're, as far as emotions, I was up in my emotions. Mm -hmm. So what happened was how Yah made it good and let me see just because I gave it to him and he gave it to someone else. Someone may have been more in need of it than my husband. Mm -hmm. So after everything was said and done, I got a text message from the person let me know how how grateful they was of me giving it to them. But I was feeling guilty because I really didn't give it to them, <laughs> <laughs> but something good came out of it. Right. Um, I, I, it brought me joy, even though I was like really agitated at, but I know I was up in my emotions, mm -hmm. you know, and, and as far as the scriptures, you know, it touched me also. Mm -hmm. And I thank you. I mean, <laughs> and listening to everything everybody is saying the one thing that keeps coming to mind to me is the feelings and the emotions are coming for a reason there's an underlying situation that's causing that stuff to come so we have to look and see what it is that's causing the feeling and the emotion to come do, do you know what I'm saying we're, mm -hmm. It's not just coming up for no reason. There's a reason why it's surfacing. So we have to dig a little deeper and find out why that thing is still coming up. Because it's not, it's not the, what somebody said or it's not necessarily always what somebody's doing, but it's something that you're feeling on the inside of you that has triggered that thing and made it worse. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? So sometimes we gotta stop and say, wait a minute now. Pastor Joey didn't say nothing to offend me, so why am I feeling offended? Mm -hmm. Let me think. Let me think. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes we gotta dig a little f further to find out because Yahweh is speaking to us in it. You, you know what I'm saying? If it rubbed me wrong, Yahweh's trying to tell me something. But a lot of times we stop at a certain point. Oh no, that's not me. <laughs> I'm too, too saved for that. But a lot of times we gotta be honest and say, you know what Yahweh, that is rubbing me wrong for yep. a reason. Yep. I got to dig and find out. If I want to walk like y'all and talk like y'all, I got to dig. Because he's showing us some stuff for, that we need to pluck up and pluck out. But we don't always be, um, nope, 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 I ain't going no further. You're not going to see that weak side of me. You're not going to see that side of me that, that's, that's nasty. You're just not going to see it. But Yahweh is telling us something for a reason. He's telling us something for a reason. And in and, and this season that we're going in now, we as believers really need to get it together because we have to witness to those in the world. And if we jacked up, we can't expect them to receive us when we come, wanting to give them the right word, but we all messed up. <laughs> yep. Yep. And it's, it's something that uh, when we go and try to minister to people outside of the faith, they got more. They're not crazy, right? They see and they watch and they notice, right? So they know. If you're doing the same things I'm doing, what you're telling me don't mean nothing, right? You're supposed to be in a better place. So they got, in, in them cases, they got more discernment than we do, right? <laughs> so we need to make sure we get to the place where no matter what anybody says to you, because, I mean, they're going to test you, right? No matter what any, what any, whatever anybody says to you, you're going to get the same response, right? And that's actually a... Um, in computer worlds, right, like when people try to attack a system, we make it so that they get the same response, right? So it confuses people 
if I'm trying to hit this one thing and I get something that is not what I'm expecting, it confuses the enemy. Right? So that's, that's where we're trying to, that's what we should be doing as well. You know, whatever comes to us, it should be the same response. Off topic. But um, this morning, we, me and Everett and the family were a little late today because we were watching something. I don't even know what it was on Facebook, YouTube. I don't know. But this, it, it was church, and this lady was in church with her baby. Oh, I hope I don't cry. Oh, my God. The baby was eight months old, was in a coma for six months. Wow. The babysitter shook the baby, mm. put her in a coma. So they're at church, and the mom wasn't crying. She brought the baby up to the altar, and they're praying on the baby, praying for the baby. So the clip was pretty long, but it said like 23 minutes later, a couple minutes later, the baby woke up. You saw the white, white pastor? Yes. Blessed. Woke up out of a coma, and it just did something to me because she had enough faith to know that this baby's coming out of this thing. I mean, whether it's a baby, whether it's a job, whether it's your money, that thing can wake up and turn around. And I'm like, we complain about the stupidest crap. And this baby was dead, like deadless for six months. And that sometimes it feels like so long. You're in the same situation for months and months and months, but Yahweh can turn that thing around. That blessed me. I came in here crying. I was like, my eyes are gonna be leaking all service. Cause <laughs> it just, and it's a whole perspective. If the mom was not a believer, she could have been like, oh my God, you killed my baby and not have the faith that this baby could have turned her life around. It's the way you look at something. If you look at something as the outcome is gonna be blessed, the outcome is gonna be blessed. But if we look at something, oh, what was made, it's the situation and we take it as what it looks like or what it feels like, we're never gonna overcome that situation. Right. So I just, He's just doing something new with me. Like even in my relationship with my husband and my kids and work, it's just, things are ticking. He's doing something new and I like it. It's, it's emotionally draining, I think, but it's blessed and I'm liking what he's doing. And I don't know, I don't even understand what he's doing, but I know he's doing something awesome and I just have to go with it. He's, oh, oh this Pastor Joseph, I'm ready to shake you up. <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and definitely, like, like today's word, it's, it's just a thing of giving your present, giving all those things that you would have said in their present, giving it to him, and letting him mold it. I mean, it's going in your life right now. <laughs> I mean... I mean, and we've been getting these words like this as a shift coming and there's, there's new things coming and there, he's going to move in our lives. And it's just a culmination of that. And he's trying to prep us to be ready for what's coming for, that he's bringing for us. Right. And what you're seeing now in your lives is just him working. Now, as long as we let him work, he can do that thing in us. As long as we keep yielding ourselves to him, and like today's word, as long as we keep yielding what we're going through right now to him, all of these things is going to fall into place. Things we've been praying for for years, things we've been going through for months, you know, all of those things are going to finally fall in place. All of those things are going to finally start going the way that we think they should go and we feel they should go. And all of our prayers will start, you'll start seeing results from all of that work. So as long as we stay focused and know what the goal is and keep our minds there and keep focused on him, he's going to continue to bless and add to and upbuild our lives. He's going to continue doing that. So that's the important thing in our lives. And you, you see it now and continue to give him his due glory as you see these things change. Even if you don't see him change, the thing is to stay focused on him and it will, it will happen. But the point of today's word was to get our focus from what's going on right now to what we should be doing for him right now. And that, that's, that's where Yahweh is trying to pull us to. And as long as we hear that and we keep our ears open and we keep our, 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 our spirits and our, our, our flesh in check, 
everything that he has for us will come. About it is that if we suffer with him, we shall reign with him. And I think that's the problem. I think he's trying to get us to the place of being just like him to the place that we can say, you know what, nevertheless, not my will, but you will be done. And, and, and the, the moment he spoke that, everything in his life came in place. He, he died, but then he rose. And I, and I think he's trying to get us to that place that, 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 um, that, that, that we'd be just like him, that we speak to stuff and things happen. Like the, the same power, the same strength, the same anointing, but, 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 we, but we can respond the way that um, he, he responds to get the this, this same results. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling y'all, he, he, he's doing something strange in my life. I don't know. It's almost like he's turning, like you said, things are, are, are turning all the way around. Folks are being blessed, and, 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 and I don't even know what's happening. Like the, the man said, but Lord spoke to them to give me a seed. But the, but, the, but the very next hour, things happen to, to, to them that haven't happened in years. They're like, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm going to keep seeding you. Because things are happening when I see it into you. And I said, oh, well, my. But I mean, I got call after call after call. So it, 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 it's getting, as a matter of fact, when, when folks hear it, they'll be like, you know what, I'm seeing him now too. Like, they believe in it because of what somebody else had said. So things are happening. And I'm, I'm just, I, I don't know. I think we're, t we're taking on another spirit in this house. That's going to be off the chain. So, you know, we get ready to go to where he has ordained for us to, to, to go. And they're going to say, how can a small church do so much? But it's the light. That's on the hill. That cannot be be what be hid, and he's doing it. He's doing it. I mean, any other comments? Red. Pastor. Pastor, I wasn't going to say anything, but you just totally hit over all my message <laughs> for this afternoon, <laughs> this evening. And, Apostle, you're correct, because I've been in other houses, and when you go into another house, you sit up underneath that oil. And the type of attacks that I've been going up against, and the attacks come mentally. And I said, I've never been under, and I called Pop, I said, I've never been under attack like this before in any house. You know, so I asked y'all, I said, y'all, what is going on? You know, because I started, you know, when you get to this level and you start seeing yourself working this, walking in certain realms with y'all and, you know, and you're above, you start to get above certain stuff. But then when y'all cut that thing down and start you all over again, <laughs> it's totally different, you know. Uh -huh. Thoughts start coming back when you say, man, I ain't had those thoughts in 20 years. Where did where that come from? You know, because steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy comes up to you. And, you know, and I said, okay, y'all, what is going on here? 
And y'all said, it's because of the oil in the house. Mm. And I have to change you. Just like he said, judgment will come to the household of God first. Mm -hmm. So that judgment is coming to us. It is he's trying to correct us, fix us, get us in the posture where he needs us. So when it's time to go to the world, we'll be ready. And we're going to be ready. I mean, small beginnings, but this is going to be awesome. I've seen it. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be powerful. It is. And we're going to go through something. But he also is going to show us, like he's showing us right now, as he showed us last uh, uh, Saturday, and he showed us today, he's working on us. And it's going to be a successful thing because he's teaching us. And he's showing us what we have to do to go forward. And I thank y'all for that, man. And I thank y'all for using you and for speaking to you. And even the last time he spoke, he spoke to you through you to me and you know it's so awesome right now to be able to feel know somebody else is going through like you do because I know the word comes to you first yep. you know so then you saying well, maybe is, is I'm going crazy <laughs> you know you think I'm the only one going through this but you're not you have other brothers and sisters in y'all that are going through the same thing as you're going through or even worse but they're holding on because we got to trust in Yah. And I thank Yah for using you today because you allowed him to speak to you this morning. Amen. It seems like my sons and daughters are, 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 are like being drawn. I, I, can, I can explain it to you, but they, it, I, a couple of them, Call me up, talking about relocating. I'm like, look, look. But they're, but they're really be, being drawn. It's like, it's time. It's time. So it, it, it's great to be crazy. I, I feel it. Okay. I'm done. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to sip on a little bit of juice. <laughs> I mean, I mean, taking this. I mean, okay, since we have no visitors, we'll keep on moving. Does anyone have any praise reports that 